So here's a typical standard textbook algebra exercise. <sighs> Give it a table of values, just three data points. Suppose that x equals 2, y equals 7, and when x is 5, y equals 10, and when x is 7, y equals 3. And you're asked, find a perfect quadratic formula that fits that data. All right, my advice is, just write it down. I've not got this formula written up in my head anywhere, it's not in my, not any walls around me. I'm just going to write down the answer right now. And it's going to look very strange, it's going to look very scary, but actually the approach is very simple once we get past our visual fears. Here goes, the answer is 7 times x minus 5, x minus 7, all over negative 3, negative 5, plus 10 times x minus 2 times x minus 7, all over 3 times negative 2, plus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 5, all over uh, 5 times 2. That's it. Done. There's a quadratic that fits the data. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have I done? First of all, is it quadratic? Okay, so I've uh, got like three chunks to it. Each chunk is just a number, and there's a number on the denominator as well. So there's like, this is like 7 fifteenths or something. But if I look at the numerator here, I've got x, if I expand, I'll have x squareds and x's and numbers. So this is a piece with x squareds in it and x's in it and numbers in it. This is also a piece with x squareds, x's and numbers in it. Also a piece with x squareds, x's and numbers in it. So I could combine it and really get something like something times x squared plus something times x plus number. This is indeed a quadratic formula. Great. All right, so the question now is, what is it doing? How do I produce this? And how do I know it's doing the right thing? Well, one thing you do is check, just check it. Let's actually put in x equals 2 and see if out comes x equals 7. And you'll notice what I did here is very sneaky. Look at this piece. It's got three chunks. When I put in x equals 2, I put in a factor here of x minus 2. So when x is 2, this becomes 0. This whole term, this term here is 0, the whole chunk disappears. This chunk also disappears at x equals 2. Because I want to put x equals this formula, I get 3 times 0 times something over stuff, 0. 0. So the only piece that survives that's of interest when x is actually 2 is this piece. And when I put in x equals 2, what do I get? I get 7 times 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So on the top I get negative 3 times negative 5. And on the bottom I just happen to put negative 3 times negative 5. So this numerator will match the denominator for x equals 2, which means that part is 1. All I get is 7 times 1 plus 0 plus 0. When x is 2, the answer is, the output is 7 plus 0 plus 0. It is 7. All right. Now, when x is, let me just clean my smudges, sorry, excuse me. Let's check when x is 5. Now, notice I've designed my formula so that when x equals 5, this piece disappears. 7 times 0 times something over numbers, 0. When x equals 5, this piece disappears. Only this piece survives at x equals 5. And when I actually put in x equals 5, I get 10 times, what, uh, 3 and negative 2 on the top, which is counterbalanced by a 3 and a negative 2, which I just happen to put on the bottom. Count out to be 1, I get 10 times 1 plus 0 plus 0. When x is 5, I really do get 10. And again, when x is 7, this piece vanishes. This piece vanishes, and this piece survives, but when I actually put in x equals 7, 3 times 5 times 2, 5 times 2 on the top, 5 times 2 on the bottom, cancels out, I just get the number 3. There is a quadratic that satisfies my work. Um, I can make this look slightly friendly if I like, I can do a bit of simplification. Uh, 7 fifteenths, I can at least write that, is x minus 5 times x minus 7, 10 over negative 6, was at negative 5 thirds times x minus 2, x minus 7, and a third piece which is 3 over 10 plus 3 tenths x minus 2, x minus 5. That looks a bit friendlier. And I'm not going to bother doing any more work because the question was just find a quadratic that fits the data. Got one. Done. Don't do any extra work. If I need to do something with this later on, I can, but the context will tell me what I need to do with it. Right now, I've got no context for doing any extra work. I'm not going to do any extra work. Perfect as it is. Though, in this lesson, I will teach you, actually, these aren't too bad to simplify all the way. If I want to find this as something times x squared plus something times x plus something, it's actually not too bad to simplify this. this is, if you think about it, just use your common sense, you can do it fairly quickly as well. But why do the work unless there's no need for it? Unless there is a need for it. There we go. All right, very quick. That's the idea. 
um, it's not as hard to, to construct these things. Design a term that vanishes everywhere except the first data value you're interested in, and then design a denominator to deal with what that, that denominator, the, that x value for the numerator. Um, that was pretty fast saying. Have a look at the text of this material. It goes through it slowly. All this makes perfect sense. I've been teaching this method for years with students. It takes just a little bit of practice, not too much, and then it becomes a piece of cake. Every single student I've worked with, this is clicked for and makes perfect sense. And actually everything you're meant to do in an algebra class about you know, answering questions about data fitting just fits perfectly. Just do it. This is fine. Just write down an answer. Don't need your calculator at all. All right. Read the text slowly. This is just magical. Thanks.